Warning! This podcast contains dragons. See? Like that one. What's up, everyone, and welcome to the SC Not TV podcast for Once Upon a Time, Season 4, Episode 21, Mother. I'm your host, Dom. With me, my co-host, Nikki, a.k.a. Omikins. Rachel, a.k.a. Savannah. Hello. And Cleo, a.k.a. Cleo Moto. Hello! Hello, Moto. <laughs> so how goes it? Mm-hmm. It was it was a good start. I just feel maybe maybe we should have had a little more before the beginning, uh, before the end. I meant no. This see, yeah, okay. Yes, so yes. This episode was slow, but it's intentionally slow. Yeah. This episode is setting the table for the main course. You got to look at it this way. You can't have the main course and have the finale, the two part finale, be dessert. It does it that no. It doesn't work. You, you, you gotta you gotta have the setup here. So. No, shows like this, they don't give you dessert. That's, no, they, they do. The dessert is like that last scene that you're like, Ugh. No. I don't want to eat my TV show, though, Dom. Why not? Doesn't sound very tasty. What they do is they hang the dessert in front of you, and they wave it around, and then you're drooling. That's, they because they know you're on a diet, and you can't eat it. They don't give you dessert. <laughs> they don't give it to you. Hmm. Yeah. So no, oh, we got no. we got uh, some Cora flashbacks. Cora returned this episode. What'd you guys think of uh, the way that all played out? Uh, it was different. Me. I always I'm always very cautious of Cora, and I was like, what angle is she looking at? What angle is she looking at constantly? <laughs> what kind of angle is she going for? It'd still be an angle, even the what, even if she seemed like a nice person that episode. Yep, exactly. It's like, what, there what was an she... angle. It was a little more blatantly obvious, but there was an angle. It wasn't yeah. like a secret scheming Cora. Yeah, just... that's what I'm constantly looking for, is that yeah. scheming Cora. I mean, it, it was to a degree a little secret scheme, but Regina was, was basically one up on her. So, Regina's her own worst enemy. Yeah, I mean, the, her whole plan was to to get you know uh, Regina pregnant, get an heir to the throne, and then Regina even said it herself. She goes, um, "What what am I gonna wake up to a uh, poison or whatever, and and the heir is gonna take it?" So basically, Cora's plan was have Regina get pregnant. Raise a new child, have Cora mold this child because she couldn't do that with Regina. She screwed up. She said it herself. She screwed up, and kill off Regina. Well, that, that was her plan. She allegedly killed off uh, the first queen. So right. Well, no, that's what Regina did, not Cora. Regina so, didn't kill off. Uh, Snow's mom. Well, or it did. So allegedly, it hasn't been really said. No. It's just kind of one of those. No. Eh. no, it was it was Regina. It was Regina because acting all, through all the genie did was tell Regina, or that, or she told Regina that Snow told on her about Daniel. Yeah. Right. No, she she the genie was before. No, the, no, the reason Snow. No, I mean this is. Before, before Regina even thought about whole marrying the king. Oh or, yeah, it was the father that Regina got. Yes. So Cora but still, had it's the, the same concept. It's the same concept. She, you do away with the current heir, with with the child. So it's Cora's child is acting now to get Cora in power. So if Cora is planning this with in way, 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 way in advance with Regina's kid, it's it's the exact same scenario that's going to play out. It's so the kid can gain power and Cora can still get what she wants. So, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. But, um, so she tries to, like, she finds out from Tinkerbell, right? So apparently Cora met Tinkerbell. That's, that's a flashback I'd love to see sometime. But, uh, and, uh, but I don't know. Tinkerbell was in Wonderland, so she can... Oh, Tinkerbell is currently a zombie right now. Yeah. 
So is she a zombie? Yeah. She's an well, iZombie. She's, she's the main character. She's the main oh, character. That's of, right. Yeah, she's the main character on iZombie. Uh, main character to live more. Ha ha. So yeah. um. <laughs> That's her name, Cleo. I can't help it. Don't roll your eyes don't at me. Just don't listen. Don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, but that would, that would be an interesting, uh, you know, kind of flashback to see somewhere down the line if they could ever work that out. But Regina goes and she's, like, inquiring. She finds out about the man with the, the lion tattoo. She's acquiring. She go talks to uh, the sheriff of Nottingham. I don't think it was the sheriff at that time, but yeah. No, he did say he, he is said, the he sheriff said, of Nottingham. Were they always him? Yes. I don't think yeah. he said that he was the sheriff. Is after, this is after he comes and bullies Robin out of his tavern. Yeah. He's right. such a douchebag. He is. He is. He's great, though. He's um, supposed to be a douchebag. But then when, when Regina found out and cast a spell or whatever, and all of a sudden that tattoo came to life, I want to know, where can I get one of those tattoos? You can't. No, I want that. That exact Why would tattoo. You want oh. a lion go, tattoo. go pissed off yes. an evil queen somewhere. Yes, I want a tattoo that runs around my body, attacking me intermittently throughout the day. You wouldn't want that as soon as the text puts in his pants. Okay. So didn't think Dom that one through, did you? Dom is the you know he's the sub in the BCLE BDSM relationship. No. How cool of a story is that? You're just, like, having a conversation with someone, the thing, like, jumps from your arm to your neck, and just, uh, that would be a cool conversation piece. Try try and hold a conversation while that thing's biting. That'd be 911 would uh, get called every once in a while, <laughs> people who don't know you. It'd be great. I would love it. But, um, you know, so they had that. Regina saw right through it, you know, as ever. And, um... Uh, but, you know, it, with way Coral was, it, was like, did Regina really see through it or did she just see what she wanted to see, you know, the evil in Cora, or did Cora really do it? It's kind of, it was kind of one of those ones just like, okay, was Cora really being nice or was she actually just having the angle or, you know? No, if Cora was being nice, she would have taken the time to talk to Regina about it. And not go behind her back and try to fish some guy out of a bar for her. I mean, if she she's taking the time to go out to Nottingham in the first place and inquire yes. about the man with the lion tattoo, why not just find Robin Hood? Inquiring is different than he's married. bringing a man home and putting a mask on him, for, uh, so to speak. But Cora didn't know that. She just yes, inquired. Yes, she did. He said, he said that, he did. She, he, that she he's knew. married to some... Nottingham some, told her? Basically, yeah. ho that no one's gonna look twice at because you know she turned them down. I must have not heard that one line. Oops. Yeah. But uh, Lee Silver mentions that Doctor Whale is also on Eye Zombie, so maybe we get them both back in the same episode. You know that is that is true. So they did they did reference Whale in this episode. Yes. So it's pink, Tink as well. So yeah. So it's it's possible. It's possible. Uh, but. The last little thing with Cora is, is we did find out that she escaped the looking glass, as as uh, Regina put it, by use of a rabbit. So, you know, white rabbit, they're still keeping uh, Wonderland canon alive and well. Mm -hmm. So, I was happy with that. But, um, yeah, so further going with, with Regina, like the flashbacks and stuff, they were cool. Um, they more represented symbolism than direct plot of how it, you know, it, it carried over and, and tied into the episode. So, like, a lot of it had to do with Regina and Zelina, you know, that kind of symbolism for the relationship there. And mm -hmm. so they take, you know, everybody goes back to Storybrooke, they lock Zelina up in Belle's old cell down in the, the psych ward. Um, and, I've always uh, wondered who that nurse is. Yeah, I'm... She doesn't say anything, but she just looks disapprovingly. She's got that continues. resting bitch face, too. Mm hmm I don't know who she is. Every time I see her, I always wonder, I wonder who she is. It's the same lady every time. Mm-hmm. Like, that is one... Will we ever know? That is one, ma uh, like, amazing, reoccurring minor role. Like, I love it. <laughs> so. Um, but, yeah, so... We have the, this whole thing with Zelina, and Zelina's like, oh, what are you going to do? Keep me in here for nine months till I have the baby, and then, you know, you're going to take the baby, you can't kill me, you know, because then Robin won't be able to forgive you for killing the mother of his child. And 
as soon as those words escaped her mouth, I was like, uh, Zelina, did you not remember the original timeline when Regina did just that, killed the mother of Robin Hood's child, and Robin seemed to have got over that just fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, uh, I was waiting for a like quick witty retort from Regina, but she seemed to have forgotten as well. So. Well, you know. <sighs> she had a lot of things on her mind. Yeah. Also a different person. That is true, too. As much as I miss the old evil queen. <laughs> we see glimpses of her every once in a while. Yeah, we've seen glimpses of her. Well, when she was talking to Lily, we saw it. Yeah, we did. So, like you said, we get we got glimpses, but especially with Zelina, like that is justification for the evil queen to come out, and we didn't get it. So I was kind of disappointed with that. What do you mean, like Zelina pushing her? Yeah. Yeah, with just Regina to like act like a bitch to her. Yeah, I mean, I think, but I think that's the point, and that's showing how far Regina's come is that she's better than that. Yeah, but I guess I don't know. I just don't like Regina having pity it. on her. I don't no. like it. Well, think about it. You know. Um, She's the only family Regina has left. Also not about pity, and no, she doesn't you know care what? that they're sisters. Family doesn't about start doing and end with right blood. Thing. No, but, Thank you know... Thank you, Dean. <laughs> <laughs> Thank uh, you, Winchester. You're welcome. <laughs> we have a big Winchester fan over here. But, yeah. you know, that's what that's what Zelina wanted the whole entire time, was a family. Yeah, well, but you know, I don't think it's about bitch. Family. But who it's knows? About Gina doing mean, the right thing, being the good guy. Yeah, Zelina was a little is is a little scared. She is nuts. She deserves to be in a padded cell. She's crazy. Yeah, bitch, be crazy. She does, <laughs> and she's right. got she's got the bracelet on that prevents her from doing magic. So you know we don't have to worry. I was like, you're really gonna bring her across the town line? Like as soon as you go across the I town know, line, right? bad things are gonna happen immediately. And I guess they came prepared. That's good, you know. So. But now that we found out why Regina has hasn't had a child of her own, she right. can't. She literally can't. It's due to the flashback we saw. She drank the potion, you know. I, Maybe there's an antidote. Who knows? I mean, anything really now is possible because of the writer. Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. So they could go back and change anything because they. Uh, yeah. They but alluded they don't to have the to fact. Back to change anything. He can just write the antidote into life right then and there. I know. That's right. But I, th I also think that that's not the point. The point was the writer was there. She could have told him to let her be able to have kids, but that's not what she wanted. She doesn't care. She's had a child. She's raised Henry. Yeah. Right. She's had that part of her life already. Yeah. She doesn't need to have a baby. And it's interesting, like, all this time she's wanted her happy ending, and. Zelina, of all people, comes from Oz. Uh, we kind of get this, like, little there's no place like home vibe from Regina, where I've had my happy ending all along. It's been right in front of me. You know, and it's it's like it's flashbacks to the end of The Wizard of Oz immediately, you know? Yeah, well, you know, like her mom. Actually, one thing Cora did say was, like, you're the only one that's getting away in your own happiness. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's, it's like, Damn you, Cora, being all nice and... Or something nice. nice. You gotta put the nice, nice in quotes, because she's being yeah, she's nice, nice, but she's also manipulating. She's, which, she's yeah. self-serving. She's self-serving. If she's nice, it just it's because it's benefiting her. Nobody yeah. is nice in this show. Nobody. Not Nobody? even the Charmings. Not even the Charmings. Nobody is nice. <laughs> Good Nobody. does not mean nice. I'm nice. I have nothing to throw at you because I can't freaking reach you. <laughs> wow, that is definitely throw not nice. All the way to Connecticut. <laughs> Rachel's scooting away. She's trying to dodge this one. She's back. Hi. Hi. Yeah, I don't know. So it seems like uh, Regina's fanfic is never going to come to life. For fanfic? Yeah, this whole yeah. this whole thing is like a big fan fiction yeah. setup with, with the author. I don't understand. What whole thing? Yeah, the, the author. What? The author so. is basically anyone here can write their own fan fiction, and it is now part of this. It's now canon to the story. She doesn't yeah. give shit I, anymore. 
No, yeah, she doesn't care. She doesn't want to rewrite right. it. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. I was looking forward to seeing Regina's fanfic, and now we lost it. <laughs> I No, I prefer this. I prefer her being like, you know what? I love my life, and the mistakes and the things that have happened are part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so we get to see Lily, dragon form, you know? Yes. She wanted that really woman. nothing to do with with her mother. At oh first. no! She, you know she didn't. It's kind of weird. Maleficent wants to move on and just leave the past in the past, and she didn't what quite live up to none her of expectations. Dude, she, she right, like insulted. Be all dragon, bitch. Yeah. She insulted her mom and the freaking and grannies. Yeah. Straight out, just like bitch. What'd you do? Roll over? Did they give you a dragon treat? Did they rub your belly? Um, Whoever knew Maleficent was such a pushover? She's not a pushover. Oh, belly rubs! (laughs) I don't know. Mm. (laughs) Maleficent's a pushover. It's a mom thing. I think. I mean, is she... Okay, explain the mom thing as in, you know, concurrence to Maleficent, because... I don't know, she's never experienced that love, obviously, so... Lily, yeah, of course, Lily hasn't experienced that love, and Maleficent is so full of just appreciation that Lily is alive. Of course she's going to be like, I don't care about anything else, I just want to spend time with you. Right. And Lily's like, I wanted you to be this raging bitch, and you're not. So I hate you. (laughs) I don't know, for that time a month. (laughs) You know, like, what? I do like the fact that she was like, <laughs> Maleficent, so like, she doesn't know how to fly. <laughs> she hasn't been taught to fly. Yeah. So obviously it's a family, it's a family thing or because someone had to talk. Dad Malef- yeah. Well, this, I mean, well, someone taught Maleficent how to fly. So well, it has to be. It's also that. the fact that this is her first time as a dragon. Uh-huh. You can't, you just don't instantly know how to fly. It doesn't Holy work that shit. way. Like, if these like you, you think about it. You're you're turning into a dragon. These are now muscles and appendages and whatever the hell you want to call them that you've never used before. You have no clue how any of this works. So yeah, well, it I just, totally made sense for her to just go ape shit wild and fire spewing out of her mouth when she didn't even know what was going on and you know. And then you would well, think you, know. you would think that uh, uh, Snow of all people would know better to rush headfirst into a dragon. It's like. Have a little common sense? She None. feels responsible. She wants to... Responsibility thing. She feels guilty. She wants things to be better. She, she wants, wants to make it right. She wants... Yeah. But, yeah. So, I don't know how that's going to go. I mean, Lily's staying, staying a week. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, that'll be interesting to play out. And the, the fact that Lily's blood was able to be used as a substitute for the ink... Uh, from Emma was really interesting. It kind of caught me off guard. Well, I mean, it's because the Savior's of, Darkness. And oh yeah, it's right. the Savior's Darkness. Right. They're like sisters. Emma doesn't have that anymore. Related. Lily does. Or something. I mean, Emma, Emma still has darkness. Um, of but, but yeah, Lily has more. Well, she Lily literally has two has cups the of darkness and one cup. Darkness. Right, no, I understand that. Innate understand potential that. for darkness. Yeah. Emma's got her own, like, grown-up potential for darkness. <laughs> grown-up <laughs> potential. <laughs> yeah. But but Lily's got the, I was born with this potential. Mm-hmm. And I think her knowing that she was, I think, only made it worse. And kind of made it kind of her excuse why she's why she acts the way she acts and does the things she does. Yeah, I guess. Um, but I, I was just kind of surprised that the Emma resolved the whole you know charming and Regina uh, charming and whatever. No, why did I say Regina? I don't the hatred like that she had for her parents. Not hatred, but the <laughs> anger I should say. You know that, that she had. Yeah, for her parents. Like I, I'm kind of surprised that it was resolved in this episode. Well, it's not, not really. I mean, you she had that whole chat with Hook. Be doing something else in the background. I mean, she had that whole chat with Hook, and you know, but she Emma's she had the heart to heart. 
Yeah, she has the heart to heart with say, the I'm working towards forgiving you and that have that be a lie. Yeah. I didn't say she was lying either. You can still uh, get Simba. a resentment for somebody even if you forgive. She's Simba. She's the Lion King. <laughs> well, and also Emma looks a lot better. She's wearing makeup now. She doesn't look like she's been dragged through the mud. <laughs> and she actually got some sleep. Yeah, right? It's just a little sleep. Just a little. She slept for a long time. I don't know. It's just... I also was kind of a little bit all over the place. It was. It really was. I mean, we had that. We had Rumpelstiltskin. That heart is almost gone. Yeah. You know, it's it's a it's amazing he's able to do anything good at this point. Well, now you know now that we find out that well, he's not doing anything good. It's two two pe- He's basically two people. As we thought, you know, he was the you know the dark one. When in reality, there's Rumpelstiltskin and the dark one. Yeah. There is the avatar of the Dark One, and then there is the person who takes on the role of the Dark One. Right, and the heart is so blackened at this point that it's basically the Dark One. It, He's like, there's well, almost Rumpel, no Rumpel, Rumpel Stilskin at this point. Rumpel can oh. die, but... Which, getting back to like three weeks ago, completely justifies all his actions in my mind, and Rumpel can be redeemed, and... If, I'm, gonna, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say it again. I don't think so. Well, because we've seen how dark the heart is, and this now knowing, yeah, even better. more knowing, that this is the avatar of the Dark One, that almost everything that we've seen in this last season is the Dark One doing these things, not Rumpel. But it's not. Rumpel is still Rumpel. He said so himself. He said when he dies, when his heart goes completely black, then the real Dark One will come forth, and you don't want to mess with him. Right. If Rumpel, when he, when he still had the bit of red in his heart, if he stopped, if he did good, if he didn't go evil again... He would be fine. But he fucked it up. But he kept doing evil and his heart got up. The only way that the Avatar... Darker and he's going to die because he made the wrong choices. Yeah. The Avatar is dormant right now. And then when Rumpel dies, that's when the Avatar becomes active. So yeah, I don't, all of those decisions that Rumpel made were his. I don't think that's the case. I, I think that's that... That's not be the case. You are... Okay. You are making excuses for him. No, nope. have in this whole season. No, nope. nope. yes. no. I, I I don't feel that this little tiny sliver of a red line is the only thing keeping the dark one from um, surfacing. I, I think it's the only thing preventing the full on takeover of the dark one. But I think the dark one has more influence than you guys realize. Yeah. Darkness has influence over everybody, and he's ma- we we know from the very beginning. Magic comes with a consequence. He didn't oh, care he, about the consequences because he had no. the power. Right. But All the consequences is right. I understand that, but, but I'm saying like yes. So I'm going all the way to storybook before the curse. Before the curse. Everything that he did had blackened his heart. We don't know the extent of how black it was, but it blackened his heart. Right. Mm-hmm. So that was all that. So everything that's happened in Storybrooke, especially season one, he was still the dark one. Then he found love, he's trying to, like, overcome it, but we see parts of this darkness bleeding through, right? It's been bleeding through, it's been carrying over, and it's consumed him at this point. So I I don't feel like it's him saying, I'm doing this because I'm just going to be a dick. There's something causing him to be dark, and it's his heart. It's taking over him. That's that's what it is. He doesn't have full control. What's that? Well, first you said it was Alina okay. that was making him make these choices. Now you're saying it's the dark one. Now you're saying it's his heart. You are really are just making excuses. No, Zelina no. was in control of him last season. Yes. Yes. But and that darkened his heart more. Everyone who have... has embraced darkness. How do you explain their decisions? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. You were echoing. Um. Everyone who has had like, experience with dark magic, like Regina, like her mom, like Zelina and stuff. They've all... Are you saying darkness is influencing them, too? It's not their decisions? It's not power? Cause no, power no, because we've seen their hearts. Decisions. We've seen their because hearts. They're trying to do good. We've seen almost everybody that you've talked about their hearts, and their hearts are nowhere near black into the level of, of Rumpel. Don't forget, he's been alive for, like, 700 years. Yeah. So he's he's had a lot more time for this darkness to seep in, plus the entity of the Dark One itself 
is, is something completely different than any of these other characters. It's like this internal struggle that he's dealing with. Yes, he brought it upon himself for bringing the power in, but it's it's I think it's it's out of his his control. No, because there was a point where he was good, and he made good choices. Correct. And he went back on it. When things didn't go his way. Kept doing evil. Correct. That that was the true love trying to repair things, and it didn't quite work out. So you guys mean to tell me that there's nothing that could happen that would ever get you guys to like Rumpelstiltskin again? I'm... If he keeps making bad choices, no. Which he seems he's to... He's not. He's trying to fix it. He things. is! No! He's not trying no, to fix still crap. A bad he, he he's still trying to save his own is bad. If he rewrites one sentence, it ruins everything. He's trying to Everyone's save his own skin. Different. He's not trying to do good. He's trying to save his own freaking skin. Yes, he's trying to change things. He he wants he doesn't want his heart blackened anymore. So that's why we see the book at the end. He's got the heroes and villains book. I'm just gonna put this. That up decision there. in itself is a bad decision. It's a selfish and decision, but it's to save his heart. Yeah, to save himself. He doesn't Correct. give a shit for anybody else. Correct. Correct. in the kingdom so he can be the good guy, so he can be the knight in shining armor. That's not the right choice. That's not the good choice. No, that's just the, hilarious. He's still a coward I didn't choice. say it was the right choice, and I didn't say it wasn't cowardly, but he's doing it to save his heart. Yes, he's being so selfish. He's justified because yes, he's I'm being not. selfish. There's many people out there that are selfish, but that selfish anything. does not make you a completely bad person. Does not make you it's evil. Fix anything. I think it's gonna fix everything. No. Mm -hmm. He thinks it's gonna fix everything, but it's just gonna be like a glimmer, or you know, like freaking Zelina's glimmer. It's just gonna be a nice new paint coat. I don't know. Over a crappy wall. I don't know. We'll it's see. Gonna bleed. see. I'm it's very, gonna bleed through. I'm very interested in this this finale. This two part. So we have the two part episode. We have, we have Operation Mongo Mongoose Part One and Two, right? And before I even get into the synopsis, just the preview from next week, we see everybody with role reversals in like, yeah, in Storybrook, flipped. like in, not Storybrook, but Fairy Tale Land. We see we see Rumple in a suit of armor riding on a horse, being the the knight in shining armor, as as Cleo put it. Um, yeah, we that's see, what he wanted. We I see, laughed, um, and I thought that was the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. We see I Prince Charming that. as like uh, it looked like either the Sheriff of Nottingham or Graham or you know something along that line in that kind of role. We see Snow White as the evil queen, like it's, Snow White it's had legit role Charmed reversals. Heart in her hand. Yeah, she had Charming's hat in her Yeah. So, this is going to make for a very interesting finale. It's it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Alright, so the synopsis. Operation Monger is part one and two. The author proves to be a formidable wild card and forges an alliance with Gold. Emma, her parents, Hook, and Regina scramble to stop them, but when Gold and the author turn the tables on heroes and villains alike, the prospect of any happy outcome appears worlds away. Henry discovers he has big shoes to fill as he steps up to save his family before the story's final page is turned. It's a race to the finish and everyone culminates with a shocking twist that will leave the residents of Storybrooke reeling. I hope they don't forget when they do this role reversal and it gets turned back to normal. I hope they remember all the hardships that the villains have to go through and what the heroes go through and vice versa because then they'll have a better understanding of each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, and then maybe we won't be as jealous of each other. Exactly. I hope Belle ends up being the dark one. Mm, no, she ends up being his wife, it looks like. Yeah. I don't care. I still, I still want her to be the dark one. She may end up being her wife, his wife and then takes on the role of the dark one later. Doubt it. I want to see who becomes the dark one if Rumpel's the knight in shining armor. It's got to be uh, somebody maybe the good. Same guy, or maybe the same guy that was the dark one before him. Zozo. That he never killed. Maybe there is no dark one. There's got to be. Who says? He's writing maybe the book. The, maybe it's the guy before. Maybe that's what I said. Yeah. Zozo. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize you said it. Yeah, yeah. he's maybe he never killed him for the power. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. He's still living. He's still living his life. 
maybe maybe the the sorcerer is is the dark one that would be crazy that would i mean we we need to find out the sorcerer still maybe mulan is the dark one <laughs> now you're just trying to rile cleo up I'm s no that would be cool we'd get her back right <laughs> right <laughs> You made her walk off the show. How could you do this? But it wasn't I, me. The, you know what, Dom? It was I, just the straw that broke my back. Me you started it. Me? Yep. Yep. <laughs> I didn't even say anything. We haven't seen her, so it'd be good to see her. It doesn't matter what role she's playing, right? I have a flower crown because I need it. <laughs> I, I'm gonna agree with Nikki. I would love to see Mulan as the dark one. Oh my god. Be so gonna have awesome. <laughs> no, it's probably not, but yeah, seeing <laughs> seeing some old faces come back, this, this would be a good opportunity to bring some, some characters back that we haven't seen in a while, such as Red, right? We haven't seen Riding Hood in a bit. Yep. Um, you know, maybe, maybe get Christian Grey back. I mean, Graham. Um, right. You know... Cora, maybe Cora never died in this timeline. You know, maybe this is a good way to bring her back. Yeah. I don't know. Just changing little things could change a whole lot. So, I'm curious at how, if this is rewriting history, too, I wonder how this is going to affect present day Storybrook. If this is going to be like, like, a, if you guys ever saw, like, Lost, how at some point they started doing, uh, I think it was the, the last season of Lost, uh, they started doing, like, sideways timelines of, like, this yeah. could have happened kind of thing. So it's like, That's is that how the story is going to be told? Where we're like in Storybrooke, they're like racing to try, but like we're seeing sideways flashes of a world that could have been? Or is this That's like actual changes it, it, that the world is it going It seems under? like he's going back to the Enchanted Forest, so everyone's being thrown back to the Enchanted Forest, whether or not they're physically leaving Storybrooke. I think we'll have to wait and see. I don't know. Um, it could be just another dimension that we're seeing kind of thing like another timeline to be honest the flash then that, was where lost lost me but uh that was the last then season. that would kind of defeat yeah. the purpose of rumple rewriting history if it's just another dimension no no it doesn't i mean we could see a fi the physical story of that dimension that's just been created by the author and but everyone's not going to be take in story. Over if the last page is written, but that's why Henry is trying to stop them. Oh, you never know. But it, it seems like Henry's not affected. So I guess what he's never. Yeah, that's that's know. where <laughs> that's why I started the the sideways timeline kind of theory is because oh. if Henry's still in Storybrooke, that means the curse was still cast, which means the Charmings still have to be there because they're the ones that cast the curse. Um. You know, because if everybody got returned and the Charmings are gone, then the curse is no longer there, which means Storybrooke is no longer there. And the fact that they brought up in this episode, um, you know, oh, the Charmings, this is your curse, you know, like, can't you do this and prevent people from leaving? And then I was like, oh, yeah, I totally forgot that the curse was wiped out, and that explains how, you know, they're able to cross the town line with their memories and stuff now, so... Little by little, like, they're they're doing... Like, that's something I should have remembered, but they, they seeded these little things to remind me of some of my my gripes that I've had this season, and pretty much everything that I've, I've been angry about this season, they fixed, so... Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, we still got one more episode for them to break so many things that I'm going to be enraged, but <laughs> I, 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 I'm very curious to see how this pans out, and if this is an actual change to their history, or if this is just a this could have happened and it's not going to happen until the story is finished. And if Henry stops them, it doesn't go through, but we still see it anyway, kind of, you know, just a, a glimpse into what could have been. Yeah. Um, that's the, that's a theory that I'm going to go with because that's the one that I would like the most. And since a lot of the lost writers are on the show, um, like all the major lost writers anyway, it very well seems plausible to me that this is going to be a sideways timeline. So, I don't know. They lost a lot of people doing that, so they might not do it again. Yeah, but it's it's going to be in a completely different way. It's not going to yeah. be. It, this is this is across a, a two part episode. This isn't across an entire season. So, 
they're not going to twist it so much that we do not recognize the place that they're in, the people that they are. They're just going to, you know, give us a glimmer, a little taste of what could happen. Yeah. That's, that's, that's honestly, honestly, I think, the best way that they could do it because you start messing with... We've already seen one time what going back into the past and messing with time travel did for this show, and Cleo still rages about this. When <laughs> She's like, nope, that episode didn't happen. She's blocked it out of her memory. No, so honestly, now we're doing a whole reason- episode where everything is different. So if you go back and change every little thing, then you're going to start questioning how Storybrooke is even in existence anymore. I honestly only make that joke because uh, to cover up for the fact that I always forget no, that I that know. happened. I know. <laughs> so just constant forget. I mean, if if you guys watch uh, our podcast for the Flash, you could see me and Cleo discussing time travel in I was actually... more detail than I've ever wanted to d- discuss time travel <laughs> in my life. I was so you could see up. where our issues lie with time travel to begin with. So if this is in fact everything is changed and they're trying to catch us up into what is it 20 something years 19 years however old emma is of things that were changed back then to now it's gonna be too much she's She's in her 30s 30 what i don't yeah i don't know now yeah yeah so changing all this stuff and updating it 30 years later into the future that just seems like a headache to fit into a two-hour uh, spot. So I'm I'm 100% confident. I should say 99.9% confident that this is going to be a flash sideways. So we'll see. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Uh, you guys have anything else for this episode? Anything uh, you're looking forward to? What, what do you guys expect out of the finale other than the, I expect the time this. travel stuff? Like, what what storylines are, are not resolved that, that you think? Because to me, this resolved just about everything. All the loose ends are tied up except for the the stuff going on with the writer. No, you know what? Wonderland was mentioned so many times this episode. That is a story that is unresolved for me. Fuck them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. I have a feeling they might they might that and Cinderella next season. Yeah, Cinderella as well. But yeah, that and Aurora Cinderella and are Philip too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Aurora and Philip really haven't been in the season at all. No, and. There's Mulan. That's an unfinished business. Thing. Yeah, no, I know, but that's that's unfinished more for the series. I'm talking about this direct season. Like anything, any loose ends of this season that, that they haven't tied up yet. Yeah, I'm just waiting for you know Aurora to see Robin and go, "Hey, where did Mulan head off to?" Yeah, I mean, I feel like an omission of major characters is un, un you know something that's not tied up. Yeah, no, it is, but like it's it's. I, the thing I I understand Philip and uh, Aurora that can kind of be explained off of when they they eventually get to it and be like oh they didn't come over with the curse they did you know, did they yes because they were in the mommy and me well class. we know that Aurora's here she was there with the baby we don't know about Philip in the baby class I don't remember Aurora yes. I remember Cinderella no Cinderella was Aurora the- and Cinderella. Cinderella you don't they remember were- me going off on a rage because they didn't mention Philip or Mulan mm hmm. You don't I, remember, re- I remember. Really I remember the the rage, but I thought that was because Aurora wasn't in it and Cinderella was. No, no, no. It's because yeah. Aurora okay. was in it and Mulan and Philip were not even mentioned. Okay, interesting. That's I why I was yeah. like, I don't know. Mulan, Maybe Philip was Mulan. I can hundred percent understand though. Mulan makes sense because she went to go join Robin Hood's Merry Men. She didn't show up, so there is a story to be told there, and it's not something that they they want to brush off in like a half-assed one-episode answer. It seems like it's going to be part of a much deeper storyline, and when they get to it, I think you're going to appreciate the fact that they waited. I don't think this is going to be something that is going to be swept under the rug and you're never going to hear from Mulan again, because there have been interviews with Adam like and Eddie. Like the Mad Hatter? No. They, we so we know what happened with the Mad Hatter. He got, yeah. his, he got yes. his happy ending and left. He took the hat and took, took his, daughter, his daughter, and they're gone. We don't know where they went, but... They're together. We know that much. I know. I was so. more meaning like b- busy actors off doing other things. Yes. Yeah, I think no, I don't, that was I don't more think the they are busy. Making. I think that if they do Cinderella, they're going to probably throw in Aurora because they seem to be pretty good friends. Yeah. So. No, but there's I definitely a big story with we'll Mulan, that, and and it's it's what happened uh, between leaving and joining Robin Hood's Merry Men. So, 
and when they came back. So Yeah, so I what if she's off in Wonderland and that gets tied up when we find out what's going on with Will and Anastasia? Mm -hmm. Like That's my thought too, was she went to Wonderland. I, there's a know. lot of stuff that they could do with that, and that's why I say when they finally get around to it, because like Adam and Eddie, they've said in interviews that it, they're not done with Mulan. That is a story they want to get back to. There was just not enough time for it. And I appreciate the fact of the omission if there's not enough time and you shoehole, shoehorn it in there. Because look what happened with Will Scarlet. Right, we we were all excited for Will Scarlet to come in this thing, and they didn't really do much with him. They put him in there; he had some yeah. stuff, but we weren't happy with it. No, you know. So when it eventually does play, you I know, play like, out, we're gonna be like, okay, but it took them way too long to get there. So I think by giving the Mulan the space, not showing her, and waiting and getting to her, and then when they could fit her in, do it right. I'd rather see that. So yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I think that about does it. Hopefully uh, we get some answers from Wonderland um, this season. If not, I'm 100% confident we're getting it next season. I hope so. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think next season will probably be like it was the season with, you know, Wizard of Oz and then Frozen and, you know, two, almost seems like two separate seasons. Yeah, because don't forget, like, there was some unresolved stuff with Oz that carried over into this season, you know, that... We were not expecting to ever see Zelina again, and we were, you know, other than when we found out, but we thought that was going to be a flashback. We never in a million yeah. years thought that was present-day Zelina. So, you know, and then we saw a flashback to, to Oz again, you know, this, this season with Robin Hood, and, you know, so just because Wonderland was cancelled and stuff doesn't mean we're never going back there. So. I mean, if they do do the Cinderella thing, and Anastasia is the step the stepsister, that could lead into the Wonderland. It so could. it could, and that could all tie together very mm -hmm. nicely. Good, yeah. So, yeah, I think that about does it. Uh, Nikki, where can the people find you? They can find me on Twitter at LadyVenom24, L-A-D-Y-V-E-N-O-M-24. Excellent. Rachel, where can the people find you? They can find me on Twitter at Savannah17. Excellent. Cleo, where can the people find you and your pet dragon? Your pet Lily. In, and Smaug on Cleomoto on the socials and on Twitch at the Cleomoto. We, we still haven't seen this. I know. Where is Princess Deadpool, guys? We're never going to see Princess Deadpool riding the list. Yeah, actually, actually, if you it's zoomed in really, really closely, Deadpool was, was, he was there really tiny. Yeah, but was he riding Lily? Yes. Yep. <laughs> he was an Ant-Man size. He, he was. He was Ant-Man size. You can find me down below at Phenomenom. P H E N O M E D O M. You can also Phenomenom. find. Phenomenom. Da, 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 da. I like that I have a chorus now. This is nice. You can also find us on Facebook, Gmail, G Plus, Twitter, MySpace, and right here on YouTube at slash ASOT Podcast for some more podcasts for some of your favorite TV shows. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Lee Silver, thank you again for joining us in the live chat. Until the next week, for the finale, we will see you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.